And I think the key is being very confident in your negotiations as well, being confident with what you're worth. A lot of companies might try to shut you down and say, no, we can't do that. And then you're thinking, oh, have I left a sour taste in their mouth for if I start? But you have to remember, majority of people negotiate their salary. These are completely normal parts of the hiring process. <laughs> Hi guys welcome back to my channel if you're new please do hit that subscribe button and if you have been engaging with my content all this time thank you so much you guys are the real mvps do really really appreciate you if you're new and you're wondering what type of content i do so i typically talk about career financial well-being and to be honest just any day-to-day -day life type of topics um, whatever kind of comes to mind or whatever experiences that I've gone through that I feel that I want to share with you guys I tend to do that but generally you'll find a lot of career progression and financial well-being style type of videos here so in this video I wanted to talk about something that I've mentioned very very briefly in a previous video um, so if you have watched my financial crime career journey video, you'll probably be familiar with some of the things I'm going to say, but it's really about how to negotiate salary. So this is a question that I get asked quite a bit. I know on my Instagram, people have said that they wanted me to do a video about this. So I'm here, I'm listening to you guys. So I thought I'd do a very quick video on how I believe salary should be negotiated. So if you are interested in that topic, then please keep watching. So something that I've said already and I will always emphasize and I still very, very much stand by it, is that I feel that salary is something that should always, always, <laughs> I was almost going to go back on myself and I thought about it and I thought, nah, I still don't change my mind. I believe salary should always be negotiated before you start the job. And it is so key because once you get into a job, it is often very difficult to negotiate salary at that point because you don't know what the salary structure looks like. You don't know if they have very strict, rigid ways of actually obtaining more of a pay rise. And in all honesty, the best pay rises I've received have been when I've moved jobs, <laughs> um, because generally in the role, it's probably quite difficult to get the really high increments that I've been after, which is completely understandable. I mean, most um, companies will cap it at a particular percentage etc so that's why I always say it's very very important to do it before you start because you just don't know what's going to happen once you get there um, the only times I would say there's an exception to that is some people end up having to take a bit of a pay cut because they're either moving industries or they're coming into something as an entry level and they're you know going into a completely new area and in those instances it makes sense because you think well I'm brand new to this I can't necessarily command the kind of money I would want to command because I'm yet to kind of get those skills and experience. However, once you get those skills and experience and you're ready to move on to your next challenge, you should 100% be commanding the money that you feel that you're worth and that's in line with the market rate, in line with the industry, industry standard and in line with what you believe you should be getting paid. So just to put that out there, I the salary negotiations that I'm going to be talking about in this video are before you get the job. Um, and that's because I've had very little experience of having to negotiate salaries whilst I've been in a role. So that's why, for the purpose of this video, that's what I'm gonna be talking about. Now, the ways in which that I feel that you should do that is, first, you need to have in mind exactly what salary you want from that particular role. So if they have a salary range, if they've given it to you, some, some jobs don't, some jobs will say, oh, what's your salary expectations, etc. But if you have a good idea of what that range is, now within that range, what do you want? So let's say, for example, there's a salary range of 30 to 40K. Um, what amount or figure would you be content with within that range? And realistically, what amount or figure do you feel is well equated to your skills, your experience, your knowledge and what you can bring to the role? So as much as a lot of us would like to say, well, yeah, of course, I want the 40K because that's what they're paying. However, to be quite blunt, are you worth that 40K? Is it a case of maybe you've got a bit of experience, but this is the role that will actually propel you and take you to that next level so that you can command the 40K and above? Or is it that actually I've surpassed that actually? I'm actually at a stage where I should be getting that 40K now. 
but I'm not currently and that's why I'm out there getting this trying to get this role so you need to see where do you fall within that scale of that range that they are offering based on what they've put in the job description and what parts of the job description that you can fulfill and as you go through the interview process as well I think that's another area that you can actually start to really identify how much should these people be paying me based on you know you should be asking really strong questions in your interviews to find out how what the role is going to look like what your day-to-day -day is going to look like, what your responsibilities will look like. And then you can sort of say, is that figure adequately reflecting the work that I'm about to do? And if it is, then that's 100% what you should be pushing for in your salary negotiations. Now, we've all probably been in situations where we've given a salary range, and by the time we've gotten to the end of the interview process, we've perhaps reflected on that salary range that we gave, and we've thought about it, and we thought, oh, not going to lie. <laughs> think I should have asked for more money, um, particularly after you've gone through the interview, the grueling interview stages, and you've thought, wow, these people have really put me through my paces, this job is not gonna be easy, I should have asked for more money, and you're kicking yourself. But remember, all hope is not lost. Until you've signed a contract, there is nothing binding you to that figure. So you can 100% still negotiate, even after you've given a range, because you can literally say that upon reflection, when you've looked at the role, you've had conversations with the, throughout the interview process, and you've really recognized that actually, the figure that you gave before doesn't adequately reflect what you think your skills are worth for this role. And also based on what you've been told, based on the industry standard, you can even go as far as saying that you've got other offers on the table or other companies that you're talking to that are offering a certain range, etc. And you can 100% change your mind at that point. What I do, and I'm pretty sure I've spoke about this before, but I like to go on something called salary calculator and I put in the salary ranges, different amounts, and I'm like, okay, this is the monthly take home it's gonna be bringing me. I then map it to my in, my expenditure and I say, right, with this, take away all my expenses, this is what I'm gonna be left with. Is this gonna work for me? If I'm thinking about my goals for the next year or two, so let's say for example, I was like, I wanna buy a house or I wanna do this. Will I be left with a good chunk that I can put that amount in savings and still sustain my lifestyle and not be like living off of bread and tea? <laughs> I don't know why I said bread and tea. <laughs> but the point is, I think sometimes we jump at figures because they sound good, but have you actually done the breakdown? Does it make sense? Is it that actually after tax, you're not getting that much more than what you were getting before? So again, you really have to ask yourself, is this money adequately reflecting the standards that I'm trying to get to? So think about your future self, because if you think about now, you might say, oh yeah, yeah, do you know what? I just wanna get out of this job, so I'm actually completely happy with what they're offering. But think even further than that and beyond that and think, all right, six months to a year from now, if, that, if I was still getting that amount of money, will that be enough? Or will I find myself looking for another job in six months because the money that I'm getting each month is just not enough? So that's why I think it's very important to ensure that before you get into the role, you've got a salary that you know that worst case scenario, if these people didn't give me another pay rise for a year, let's say they do like yearly pay reviews and let's say you join right after that. So it's a case of your next pay review isn't for another year. Will you be happy with that money? And that is literally the principle that I apply to every single job that I have gone for, every single salary that I've accepted. I apply what I like to call the six months to a year principle, often one year principle. And I think about what I've mapped out for myself for, the, for, for that year, whether it's goals, financial goals, majority of the time it's, yeah, financial goals. And I sort of say, right, if I'm only getting this income for the next year, so forget my business, business, forget anything else extra, forget any bonuses the company might offer. If literally this base salary is all I'm getting for the next 12 months, will I be content with that? Will it sustain my lifestyle? Will it help me meet the financial goals I wanna meet? Will it, is it cutting it? If I'm being real, is it? And I think if you find that the answer is no, then that is the moment that you know you need to negotiate the hell out of that salary <laughs> um, and make sure you do that before you get the job. In terms of the best ways of approaching it, I said you could go onto salary calculator, look at the amounts, etc., but also look at the package as a whole. So sometimes there's ways of balancing out. So if, for example, you have a company that pay for your transport, I mean, maybe not so applicable now because a lot of us are working remotely, but for those of us that aren't, if you've got a company that's paying for your salary every month, paying, sorry, of course they're paying your salary every month, if they're paying for your transport every month, that's a cost saving. So when you're calculating everything, maybe the company that you're at now, you're paying for travel, but the next company is gonna pay for travel. So you can say, okay, I'm saving money in that area. Are they paying for your gym every month? All right, cool, saving money there. 
Are they paying for my medical and my dental? Okay, saving money there. So these are things that you can say, all right, they might not be giving me 100% the base I want, but I am saving money in certain areas that allows me to put away more. So again, you can do that maths that way and weigh it up that way. So if you feel that they're not meeting you where you want to be at your base, try and see if you can negotiate around the other benefits that they are offering you. So can they offer you to re work rem remotely permanently? Or if their contract says, or if it says that you need to come into the office three days a week, could they allow you to come in for one day a week so that you save two days of transport, etc. So these are the thing conversations you can have with them around, right, how can we meet in the middle here? This is the base I want. You're saying I can't quite get that. However, if you were to offer me more remote working options, I could save more money there. If you were to offer me this benefit, I could save money there. So really like have a look at their packages as a whole and see where you can kind of tweak things and see what you can negotiate there. And I think the key is being very confident in your negotiations as well, being confident with what you're worth. A lot of companies might try to shut you down and say, no, we can't do that. And then you're thinking, oh, have I left a sour taste in their mouth for if I start? But you have to remember, majority of people negotiate their salary, majority. Uh, like some people will just accept it, but majority of people negotiate it. So you're not the first person that would have done this. It's not gonna be the first time they've experienced somebody pushing back on a salary they've been offered. So never ever feel bad and never ever feel that you're gonna leave a sour taste in your boss's mouth by asking for more money. Don't feel like that. And if you do feel like that, or if your boss does give you the impression that that's the case, then that's probably not a company you should wanna work for anyway, because these are completely normal parts of the hiring process. You should not feel bad in any way or in any capacity about feeling like you should be negotiating because it's a case of, this is something that the HR teams or whoever it is you're dealing with would have faced countless times. You're not the first and you're definitely not gonna be the last. So make sure that as soon as you go in, you're going in a salary and a package that is right for you. Um, in terms of how to know when you should negotiate your salary, it's pretty simple. It's if you don't feel that the money is enough. Um, if you don't think that the money and the benefits as a whole is enough for you. It's not a case of being greedy or anything. It's more a case of, right, realistically, will this money really cut it for me? Um, is this really what I would want to still be earning for another year? Do the benefits actually save me anything? Um, am I getting anything else outside of my salary that's going to compensate for the fact that the salary might not be quite cutting it, etc. Are they paying for me to do courses at work? You know, things that might have cost me thousands of pounds, are they then paying for it, which then helps let balance it out? So yeah, I would 100% say that really look at that and that will really tell you, should I be negotiating the salary? And to be honest, I actually think most of the time, even if we're happy with the salary, I think for the sake of it, you probably should negotiate anyway, simply because from my experience, you usually have a salary range. And if an employer hasn't told you what that range is, and they've just asked you what your expectations are, and they haven't pushed back, that means that the salary that you've asked for is within their range. So therefore, the amount that you've asked for, if they give you dead on that amount, then that must mean that they've got a bit more to play with. Or if they give you something that's slightly above that, that means that actually their range was probably a lot higher than what you were asking for anyway. So even if it's just a couple grand more, I don't know. I mean, it depends on how, how worth it you think it is because yeah, sometimes it really isn't worth it when you think about the whole package. But if there is room or a little bit of wiggle room for a bit more, why not ask? The worst they're gonna say is no. It's not gonna rescind your offer in any way. They're not gonna say, oh, because this person asked for another couple grand, we're gonna take away the offer. Absolutely not. They're just gonna tell you, no, sorry, we can't do that. And that's fine. Then you can make the decision of, okay, fine, I'm gonna accept it. I went through this with a company that I worked for where um, I had asked for a, I'd asked for a certain amount of money. It actually turned out that I was gonna get a pay cut if I accepted what they were initially offering. And I pushed all the way back and I said, absolutely not. And they were able to meet me closer to where I needed them to be. I mean, it still wasn't quite where I wanted it to be, but it was closer to where I needed them to be. But some of the benefits outweighed it and also the experience and the exposure that I was gonna be getting also balanced it out and I was able to get more money over time once I'd gotten into the role, but that doesn't always happen. So this is what I mean in terms of, you can't go in thinking that, oh yeah, in a few months, they're gonna give me more money because they just might not. Look at the pandemic. <laughs> Nobody was getting pay rises then. Well, some, some people might have, but yeah. So I think that, you know, really being strategic about the fact that before you go in is the best time to negotiate it. Know exactly how much you want to be taking home every month know what kind of benefits are important to you and important to your lifestyle. 
understand you know what the whole package as a whole looks like and that should be your determining factor to whether or not you should negotiate and yeah and just be bold with it and just really just once you've done the maths and you've done the calculations say this is the figure that I feel best represents my skills my abilities what will be what will work for my lifestyle for now this is the amount and just don't don't budge on that if that's really what you need and what will get you to where you want to be financially so I hope that's helped guys um, if you do have any questions or anything that I might not have covered please do leave a comment below and I'll be more than happy to do another video but yeah guys until then I'll see you guys in the next video